Welcome everybody on this Monday afternoon to our Crochet 101 class. My name is Claire. I'll be hanging out with you in the chat. I'll be answering any questions you have there or passing them on to Darren so he can demonstrate for us. Again, Darren is your lovely teacher there on screen. Um, I'll also go ahead and put the handout in the chat in case you didn't get that ahead of time in your email. Um, and again, we'll be recording this class so you can follow along or go back and watch later and rewind as many times as you need to. And now that all of that is finally out of the way, we'll let Darren get started. All right, welcome to class. Uh, today is Crochet 101. So this is the very, very beginning of crochet. So if you've never crocheted before, if you've never held yarn in your hand before, then you're in the right place because we're going to start from the very beginning. Um, we're going to take it slow, answer all your questions to help you understand as much as possible. And at the end of class, we're going to review a pattern. And after you've had time to practice, um, you're going to have all the skills to make these um, fingerless gloves. So and I know that looks um, might look kind of intimidating right now, but um, after you've had a chance to practice, you will uh, be able to make these. And then if you make a couple pair, each time you make them, they'll get better and better. Um, and then next week, I think I told you this, yes, but next week we're gonna learn how to make this hat. And by the time you get here next week, you'll, you'll be on track to make this. So don't, if you've never crocheted before, don't be intimidated because it's, it's, you'll learn faster than you think. And it just really takes a lot of practice. So, so if we wanna go ahead and switch to the view of my hands, we'll start talking about a few other things that we need to know. So. Okay, all right. So the first thing I wanna talk a little bit about is um, yarn toys. The hey, Darren, we're... just a reminder to scoot your computer closer. Thank I you. Just I just did, okay. Yeah, um, so we're gonna talk about yarn choice. The pattern that we are gonna be reviewing at the end of class is calling for this yarn. It's called Heartland. It's by Lion Brand and it's available on lionbrand.com or on michaels.com. It comes in a wide variety of, of really great colors. Um, this color palette to my eye is a little more sophisticated. Uh, the colors are very nice. You've got this, I don't know if you can see, on the screen, but it's all of the yarn, it's slightly heathered. So even though this is kind of like a mustard yellow or an ochre, it has light and dark um, twisted together in it. So from far away, it looks like a solid color, but when you get close to it, you can see it's slightly heathered, which gives it a very nice look in my opinion. So, so this is the yarn that uh, the pattern calls for, and we'll be talking about this at the end. But for class, I'm gonna be demonstrating with this yarn. Um, this is called Hometown Bonus Bundle. And this is also by Lion Brand. And it's available again on lionbrand.com or michaels.com. It comes in a really um, wide choice of colors. The reason I'm demonstrating with this one is because this yarn is very thick and it shows up nice on camera and it's, it's very nice to work with. So if you wanna make a project with this yarn, um, it'll be great. It's not really suitable for these um, mit um, mittens that we're going to make today because this yarn is very, very thick. So you can't, I have made mittens with this before, but a different pattern would be probably better. So um, yarn is divided up into different categories. So this yarn here is a number six, and that's talking about how thick this yarn is. This yarn is a number four, and you can see it's much thinner. So the higher the number, the thicker the yarn. So it goes from zero up to seven, and seven is just kind of the catch-all for everything above six. So a seven might be just a little bit bigger than this, or it might be like as thick as your arm. It could be anything. So, but like a zero is almost like thread, and then it just progressively gets a little bit bigger. And for beginners, I recommend you staying around like a, a four, five, or six is a great place for beginners. And then it gives a recommendation on what size crochet hook to use. And this one is referring to, it's calling um, for an N30. 
13 or a nine millimeter. And that's just a couple of different ways of saying the same thing. So an N13 is a nine millimeter. Of course, millimeters are more accurate than the numbers that, um, that they're labeled. Uh, just as an example, this is an N15 and it's a 10 millimeter. So it's an N, but it's a 10 millimeter. And this is also labeled N, but it's a nine millimeter. So if you want the most accurate choice, go by the millimeters. I um, really don't use the millimeters because I'm just comfortable with the other one, but I think for, your, for the best practice, um, if you can get comfortable with the millimeter sizes, I think you will be better off in the long run. But it's hard to learn new things, right? Um, this is, a, of course, a crochet hook. And just, just for some vocabulary, let's talk about um, what, what it, different things are called. This is just called your thumb rest or your grip right here. So you can put your thumb and you can grip it. This part here is the neck um, right here where it's, um, it's not tapering, it's the neck. And then this is the throat right here where it starts to kind of taper down in. And then that's the mouth, the kind of mouth of the hook down here is the mouth. Um, this is the head of the hook right here. So you've got the head, the mouth, the throat, and the neck, and then the finger grip. And all different brands of hooks are gonna be shaped a little different. So if you get a crochet hook that you really like, um, notice what brand it is because they might all be similar shaped in that brand. Uh, or same as if you find one that you really hate, you just don't like using it for whatever reason, you know, don't, you know, that all of that brand might be made the same way. Um, they're also made out of metal. Um, you can have wooden ones, you can have plastic ones, they can be made out of all different types of um, material. I like the metal ones best because they tend to slide nicely and they just feel good in my hand. But you know, it's worth trying a couple of different kinds to see which ones you like because everyone seems to have their favorite. Okay. So any questions about yarn, um, yarn choices that I've made or like sizes of yarn, hooks, hook sizes, any questions at all? Nope, okay. So it's, it's all really important. It's very easy, but it's just really important to understand some of these things. So we're ready to start playing with our yarn. So the first thing we need to do is we need to attach our yarn to our crochet hook. So we're gonna do that by tying a slip knot. Now, if you've, if you've um, knitted or maybe you've crocheted before, or maybe you already know how to tie a slip knot, and that's fine. There's many, many, many ways of tying a slip knot. They're all good ways. I'm going to demonstrate a way to do it. Um, and I call this short over long. So you take your short piece of yarn, which will become your tail, and you make a loop or a circle, and you put the short piece of yarn over the long piece of yarn. Now, the, the long piece of yarn is connected to your working yarn, to your ball of yarn. So it, it's like a hundred yards long or something. So, but you set it up like this, you've got a circle. You're gonna put your hand in the, in the center of the circle. So put it in the center. You're gonna sneak under, and we're sneaking under here because we're gonna be grabbing that tail. So you sneak under and you just kind of grab onto the tail like this. I just kind of grab onto it. And then you want to hold the tail and the working yarn together just so that it doesn't, you know, pull through. And you just loop your finger around that tail and we're going to pull it back through. And that makes a slip knot. Now for crochet, it's ideal, it's best if the tail is what controls the size of the slip knot. And for this project today, it, it doesn't matter as much, but later on, with other types of projects, you're gonna really want it to be set up this way. So if you start tying your slip knot like this now, then you'll, you'll always kind of be doing it that way and you'll be ready for other projects. And you know you did it right if you pull it and it just slips out and you get nothing. So that's how you can be sure you did it right. So I'm gonna lay my yarn out. I'm gonna make a loop, I'm gonna make a circle. I'm gonna put my tail over top of my working yarn. So short 
over long. Put your hand in the center of your loop. And then you're gonna sneak under that loop and we're gonna grab that tail. Okay, so I'm gonna grab onto that tail and hold it. And then I'm gonna hold my working yarn and my tail together. And then I'm just looping that back through. And I see I've got this great big slip knot, but my tail controls the size of the knot so I can cinch it up to a more manageable size by using the tail, okay? Any questions about that? Any questions at all? Do you wanna see it again? Are we ready to move on? How are we doing, Claire? And then this is how I do it in real life. So it just I think fun. we could probably have time to show it one more time and then we'll get going with our chain. Okay. So just lay it out like this. We can review it again later, maybe if we have time. Take the short piece over the long piece. So short over long. Put your hand in the center. Kind of sneak under, you're going under, grabbing that tail. And then you're gonna hold the working yarn and the tail together and you just loop it back through. Now, you know, I wanna make sure everybody understands there are many, many, many ways of tying a slip knot. This is just one way. This is not the correct, this is a correct way, but it's not the correct way. It's not the official way. This is just the way I'm showing you now, just because it's it's an easy way to learn. But if you if you already know how to tie a slip knot in a different way, it's probably fine, but with crochet, the main difference is it's ideal if the tail controls the size of it. Okay. Any questions? And that'll come in handy later with the tail controlling it. Okay, so let me see what's going on here. Okay, so once you get your slip knot, take your hook and you're gonna pop that right on. And I don't know, the hook sizes, it recommends a hook size, but if you don't have the right size, you can usually make do with a size, like maybe one size up or one size down. So if you don't have the exact size hook that it's calling for, um, especially for beginning projects like this, it's not gonna be a, a crisis. You can use a, a different size hook, but you do want it to be close. Um, and then your fabric may or may not turn out exactly right, but it's a good, it's a good learning process to learn about um, different size hooks and how they affect your project. But usually one size up or one size down will be fine. Okay, so now we have to create a chain. And once we start the chain, that will determine how many stitches we're gonna work with. And that'll, it'll kind of set the foundation for our project. So I'm gonna demonstrate this chain. I'll show you several times. So hold your crochet hook. And with the other hand, you kind of pinch that slip knot. And I'm not pulling it hard, but I'm just pulling it down a little bit to um, give some tension. So I might change hooks because this one, this is an eight millimeter, but it's a different color. I think it might show up better. It might, it doesn't look much different on camera, but anyway. So you kind of pinch under the hook where that slip knot is and gently pull it down and you're gonna hold your yarn. You take your hook and you grab your yarn like this. And then as you're pulling it back towards that slip knot, you're turning it so it faces down and then you pull it through your slip knot. And that's my first chain. Okay, I'm gonna grab my yarn, turn your hook down and pull it through the slip knot. And then you can readjust your grip if you want to. Um, one thing you want to do this loosely. You don't. You're not shaping the yarn around um, the neck of the hook. Um, in, in knitting, you kind of shape your yarn around the knitting needles. But with this, you're not. You want it to be a little bit loose because the chains can be very, very tight, and that's a, something you'll have to work out later. Um, so you grab your yarn, pull it back through. And then once you get the hang of it, it goes pretty fast. Okay, so, but you're just gonna tension your yarn. You're gonna hold your yarn out and then you just kind of grab it, turn it down, 
pull it back through. Right. What questions do we have? Are we able to do that? Do you want to see a specific? If someone is left-handed, should they try doing it this way anyway, or can you show holding the hook in your left hand? Um, I don't know if I can show. Well, I can't, I don't think I can do it with my left hand. But you just do the same thing, just with your left hand instead. See, I'm not... This is not very pretty with my left hand, but you would just you just do it the same way. You just um, you can hold your yarn in your right hand and hold the hook in your dominant hand, and just um, all you're doing is just going under it, grabbing it, and pulling it back through. So it should look pretty much the same, depending on. You can try it with your right hand if you want, but you might have a hard time. I mean, I'm having a hard time with my left hand, so. I'm not even sure which way to, yeah, it all changes with your, when you're trying to use the wrong hand, everything becomes weird. So um, hopefully if you just try to do the same thing, only you'll be just doing it with your left hand. Because so with me... crochet, at least, you can hold the hook either way and make your fabric, and it's going to look pretty much the same versus with knitting. If you're knitting left-handed, then you're sort of doing a whole different thing, right? Yeah, so that's the one good thing about crochet. If you're left-handed or right-handed, uh, it doesn't make any difference with the crochet because it, it all works up the same way. But in knitting, it, it, does, it can make a big difference depending on if you're doing it in a different way or not. So. Um, hopefully that's helpful. But are we able to make the chain? Is there a certain place that's kind of like a sticking point? Need Seems to like it. we've got some people who have the hang of it and want to know how many they should make. Um, for this project or for our little exercise in class, I'm going to have us working with 10 stitches. So if you want to make 11 chains, it would be fine. So you know, maybe you want to rip out what you've done and make 11 um, just for a little extra practice. However many chains you have, I, want, I do want you to count them and know how many you have though. So um, if you want to do, don't do too many because it's hard to go across the row, but yeah, about 10 or um, let's do 11 and that'll be a good number, so. And when you're pulling that new loop of yarn through, can you show it again, maybe closer to the camera? And don't pull it tight, let it be loose in your hand. Does that help? I think so. Oh, a good question. Uh, does the slip, the, the slip knot on the beginning, does that count as one chain? No, so we're not gonna count the slip knot. Um, I, let's look and let's count how many, I've kind of lost count because I was demonstrating. So let's look at it. Um, the way we're going to count this, so if you look at my chain, it almost kind of looks like a braid, um, but you can see each, you can kind of see each stitch. They're V-shaped. So what we're looking at are kind of like these V-shapes here and how they fit together. And that's what we're going to count. So we're not going to count the one that's on our hook. So you don't count your working loop. And we're going to count one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I have one too many, and we're not going to count our slip knot. So that's how we count them. Not we don't count the one on our hook. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I'm gonna take one out and that will give me 11. Okay, does any other, any questions about how to count them? it is very important to know how to count them when you're making a project. Some projects, it'll be um, much more important than others, but it, you do need to know how to count. Does that make sense? Um, go ahead and yeah, maybe holding it up, show how you can count each stitch or each chain. Okay, so one, I, I kind of go in this V, in this point right here, when I'm counting them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So you can kind of see each one of those shapes represent a chain, kind of V shapes. Okay. Any questions? So this is how it all starts. It all starts with the chain. All right, so I made 11 chains and I'm only gonna have 10 stitches. So what is gonna happen is with single crochet, we need to um, always, we're gonna start with one extra chain. And what is gonna happen is that last chain, so the, this loop doesn't count, my working loop doesn't count. So this last chain, it's going to be turned up on its side. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna create the height of our next row. So that one chain is gonna be turned up on its side. Um, it's gonna give us a little bit of height for the next row. And then we're gonna work across in these 10 chains. So that'll make more sense once you start practicing and I'll demonstrate it a couple of times and you'll see, see what's happening. So what we're gonna do is, all, all you have to do is you skip the first one. So I'm just gonna skip that first one and that'll become the height for our side. And I'm going to go in the second chain from the hook. So I'm just going right through, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now I have two loops on my hook, yarn over, and then pull through both. And this is a single crochet. That is a single crochet. And then you're going to look for your next chain. And you're just going to find a hole right there. You go through that hole, yarn over, bring up a loop, two loops on my hook yarn over, pull it through both. And then you're gonna find your next chain right here. And you're just gonna push. See, I don't really see a hole there. Sometimes there's a hole, you can kind of work the hole open. But if you just kind of go under that strand of yarn, it'll go right through. Don't split your yarn. And then once you get the hang of it, it actually goes rather fast. So the next one, so just find that next one right there. Go straight through, yarn over. I have two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull it through both. Enter the next chain, yarn over. So if you've never done this before, if you, if, you've, if you don't know how to knit or crochet or anything, this might feel very awkward and weird in your hand. Um, that's normal. Um, you saw me struggling trying to do it with my left hand and I know how to crochet very well, but when I'm trying to do it with my left hand, all of a sudden, you know, the world's upside down and I don't know what, what to do at all with my hands. So, um, the, it just takes a lot of practice and you just have to be patient with yourself and give yourself time to learn. Okay. 
it looks easy when I'm doing it because I've done hundreds of thousands of stitches, maybe even up to a million. I've been crocheting for a long time. It just takes practice. But the good news is it's fun practice. All right, so I finished my row and I'm gonna, I'll start over and show you again from the beginning. Um, I finished my row and what I have to do is chain one and that gives me the height for my next row. Um, let's count them. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm going to turn my work. And I'm going to start again. I and then I'll start again from the what might be different about working into the second row now that we have stitches versus working into the chain. Yes. So the second, this is the first row. So the first row we worked into the chain. Um, making the chain and working the first row is the hardest part. So unfortunately, you have to do that first. But once you get past that, it actually gets a lot easier. The second row is much easier. So if you look at it now, my work, it's like a half inch wide and it gives me something to hold on to. If you look at the top of it, it still looks a lot like the chain did from the top. We have these um, V shapes and we count those and that tells us our stitches. But if you look at the side, it's right there, that's called a post and that's the post of our crochet. And that um, kind of indicates also where our stitches are. Um, so we can look for these holes on either side of the post and that shows us where we're going to work our stitches in. And so my first, this is my first one, which is the chain. Um, so I'm gonna go in the second chain from the hook or I'm gonna skip that chain and go in the second stitch from the hook right here. And I'm, this time I'm gonna go under two strands of yarn. So I'm gonna go under both strands right there and then yarn over, bring it back through, yarn over, bring it through both loops. Okay. So there's that post right here and there's the hole. So that's where I'm gonna put my next, my hook goes through, yarn over, bring up a loop, yarn over, pull it through both. Is that better? Is that less glare? Okay, so where am I gonna go again? You can kind of feel it with your fingers, feel that post, and then just scoop over just a little bit. If you move over just a little bit, you'll feel that hole. And that's where you're gonna go through. And if you have very fuzzy yarn, that helps to just kind of use your fingers. Okay, any questions? I'm gonna start over from the very beginning. So if you have any questions along the way, let me know. Start thinking of your questions now. I just wanna finish this row and then we'll start over. And these are single crochets. Finish my last stitch, and then I have to work a chain. So chain up my turning chain, turn my work, and then I'm, I'm ready to start my next row, which I'm, I'm not gonna do. But, um, so here's my turning chain, and you can see that's giving me a little bit of height. If you didn't do the turning chain, what would happen would be this, this the first stitch on the end would be kind of slanted and pulled in and that wouldn't give you a nice edge. So that turning chain gives you a little bit of height and it helps to give your edge a, a straighter, nicer look, okay? All right, so let's start at the beginning and I'm ready for all questions. So I'm gonna start with a slip knot. And in the center, grab the tail, 
hold the tail and the working yarn together, pull that loop back through, and then we've got a slip knot. I'm gonna pop our crochet hook right on there. And we're cinching, and you want it to be loose. So I'm not cinching it up really tight. Um, you wanna make sure it's loose. And so you can see, I've got some slack there. Like I'm not, you can see there, it's not pulled up tight around my hook. And especially for the chain, so sometimes when you're making the chain, you go up a hook size. So let me go up a hook size and that'll make the chain looser. It's really common for uh, the chain to be very tight and it can affect the finished quality of your work. So if you can't make your chain loose, which is a very hard thing, harder than you would think, you can go up a hook size. So one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, eight, 10, 11. So let's see if I really do have 11 because I wasn't really paying attention at the beginning. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So I do have 11. Okay, so you can, any questions about how to count your stitches? Don't count the one on your hook, that's your working loop. And then we're gonna count the chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Any questions there? Feel good about it? Okay. So I'm gonna go in the second chain from the hook. So the loop on your hook does not count. That's my first chain. And I'm gonna go in the second one right here. So I'm going to, oops, but I do wanna go back to my smaller hook. So I'd made my chain with my larger hook. Now I'm going to a smaller hook. So you go through, wrap your yarn, back through. I have two loops on my hook, wrap your yarn, and as I'm pulling it back through, I pull my hook down so it'll slide through nicely. And again, not pulling it tight, just kind of snug. And then I'm gonna find the next spot. The next strand of yarn is right there. So I'm gonna go through, wrap, bring up a loop. I've got two loops, yarn over, and then pull it through both. Enter the chain, bring up a loop, wrap your yarn, pull it through both. Any questions? We have had a couple people mention that theirs is curling. Um, and I'm not sure if it's curling on the bottom, like a frowny face, or if the edges are curling up like single crochet tends to do. Yeah, single crochet does tend to curl. So if your work is curling, um, that's kind of natural for this type of fa fabric. We're gonna be making the, if you make it into the wrist warmers though, because we're gonna be sewing them together, that kind of um, helps reduce, it's not able to curl because we're sewing them together. So uh, it's not gonna be a problem as you go, at, you know, once you finish. Um, sometimes if you crochet very, very tight, it does make it curl worse. So check, check and make sure you're not pulling it too tight. Sometimes that, that can help. But it does tend to curl a little bit. So there's my turning chain. I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I do want to make sure that you wouldn't whatever number of stitches you've decided to work with, maybe you've got a favorite number, but um, after each row, as you're practicing, I want you to count your stitches because it's very easy to add a stitch or to skip a stitch, sometimes by mistake. And I get in the habit of catching that right away. Like you don't want to let it go and um, be like five or six 
inches into a scarf and realized that instead of now I only have uh, 19 stitches instead of 20 and it's kind of shaped up. So um, count your stitches at the end of each row as you're practicing. One thing I'm gonna show you as well, um, this is my last stitch. So I'm gonna put a locking stitch marker there. And this is my first stitch. So I'm gonna put a locking stitch marker there. Um, the, usually the problem problems happen with your first and your last stitch. That's usually where um, you are in trouble. Usually the ones in the middle are pretty easy to find. So I'm gonna turn my work. I already did my chain up. And so I'm going to go under that, which is my first stitch. And then I'm going to move my stitch marker up to mark that. So I know that's my first stitch because I just did it. Sure. Okay. And I'm going to work across. And these stitch markers can really, really save a lot of time um, because if you lose or add a stitch or lose a stitch, and you don't real, you never realize it right away. You always realize it after you've been working for hours. And then you're like, wait a minute. I was watching TV and crocheting and enjoying myself and I was doing it wrong the whole time. Very frustrating. When you get to the last stitch on this row, can you just show very closely where it is? I think that's confusing a few people. Okay. My yarn's tending, starting to split because I've used it, gone over it a couple of times. Just make sure your yarn isn't splitting because that's not going to look nice. Okay. Getting close to the end. So this is where these um, stitch markers will really come in handy because if you were crocheting really tight or if your yarn were really fuzzy or something, then that looks like I'm at the end. Like you can kind of see because I've kind of scrunched it. But sometimes it'll look like that anyway. And you're not, you think, okay, I've got to the end because that looks right. But if you shape it out the way it should be, then you're going to see really that's the end. Um, and that's why I encourage the stitch marker. But the end, it, it still looks like the V. So you've still got that V shape right there. And I'm going under both the Vs. That's the end. I'm gonna put my stitch marker, because I know that's my last stitch. I just made it, so I'm 100% sure. And now I have to chain up. Chain up for my side, that's my turning chain. Turn my work. And now I'm ready to go on the next row. Okay, so I'm 100% sure that's my first stitch, right? Because I just made that stitch, so I know. So I don't have to question it or doubt. And because we're practicing and we're using these stitch markers, you know, you can learn to depend on the stitch markers, but what I want you to do is look and see how that shapes. So this first thing on my hook is my loop, so I don't count that. The next thing I'm seeing that looks like a stitch, right? But that's my turning chain. So that's not a stitch. So I've got my active loop, my turning chain, and then this next thing, this next one, that is my actual stitch. And I have it marked with a stitch marker, so I'm sure. But as you practice, if you kind of get familiar with reading your work and seeing what you've been doing, then it'll become second nature and you'll always know where you're supposed to be and you eventually won't need the stitch markers, okay? So I'm gonna go under that first stitch. And just because I'm still learning and practicing, I'm gonna move my stitch marker up. I'm gonna work across, so that's one. And 
then I get to the end. And I can, because this yarn's pretty smooth and it's very chunky, you can clearly see that there's a stitch there. That, so you wouldn't skip it. I mean, you probably wouldn't skip that by mistake because it's very obvious that step right there. But sometimes it's not. So that's why the stitch markers help. But again, look for that V shape in the last stitch, just like all the other ones. So you'll see that shape right there. And then you just go under both. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull it through both, chain up, turn my work, and I'm gonna move my stitch marker. Okay, that's my, that's my loop, my active loop. That is my chain, that's where I chained up. So I've got my active loop, my chain up, and then this is my stitch. So I'm gonna just go ahead and work that because I, I was able to you know, figure out what each of these were. So I know that's my stitch. I'm gonna put this, so you can see it kind of looks a little, I'm gonna put this on there just so I'm sure when I come back, I don't want any doubt. All right, so I'm gonna rest here for just a second. And I wanna check in with you guys and see if you have any questions. Are we making stitches? Are we successful? Any questions? What can I do to help? Um, any particular spot? I'm never sure how it's showing up on camera too. So if there's something that's not showing up well, let me know. How do we feel? Um, how are we doing, Claire? I have one question. Does it matter if you make your turning chain at the end of the row and then turn, or if you turn and then make your chain? You know, it doesn't really matter, but you, uh, most patterns are written, it'll say, you know, to work 10 single crochets across, chain one, turn. That's usually how they'll have you do it. Um, but as long as you, you're sure that you made your chain, like whenever you make it, like you're fine. Just don't forget to make it or don't make two by mistake for single crochet. But either, either way is fine, don't you think, Claire? Yeah, either way is fine. I would just say, make sure that you're doing it consistently throughout the project. So your edges look the same throughout the whole thing. Yeah, and you don't get mixed up. I'd mix myself up and forget I did it or did it do it twice or something. So anything else? And then we had a bit of confusion about when you go under two pieces of yarn versus under one piece of yarn. All right. So for this project we're doing today, for what we're learning today, when we're making our single crochets um, into the chain, you only go under one strand of yarn for what we're doing today. Um, and then once we're actually working into stitches, then you go under two strands. So let me show you that. So now I've got a few stitches on here and I'm working into my chain. And when I'm working into the chain, I'm only going under one strand of yarn. Now there are more complicated ways of working into the chain, which we're not gonna get into today, um, but you can go under both strands of yarn or you can turn it over and you can go in these bumps on the back. Um, just so you know, that's an option, um, but we're not gonna, it's harder. so. You know, there's no reason to making it harder than it needs to be as you're learning. And we're just gonna go under the one strand as we're learning. And then we can always make things more complicated later after we have some confidence built. So I'm gonna go on under one strand for the chain. And the chain, working into the chain for my, in my opinion is the hardest part. Once you finish that first um, row of working into the chain, it gets much easier. And so now I've got a whole row of, I've got my chain, I've got a whole row of single crochet. Now I'm going to go under two strands of yarn. But again, this is what we're doing today for this project. Um, there are more advanced stitches where you do things differently. We're not going to get into that now, but 
just so you know, um, I'm gonna tell you a lot of rules about going under both strands of yarn and different things, but later on, there's reasons to break all these rules. But for just a standard single crochet, we're going to go under both, but there's so much to learn. That's, it's, once you learn the basics, you can keep learning. I don't think you could ever learn it all. Because as soon as you think you've learned it all, then somebody will show you, open up a door and show you a whole new room of stuff you didn't know about. Or you don't have to, you can just keep it simple and make beautiful things. But I always like to learn new things, practice. And Daria has a good question. If you need to, you know, if you're coming to the end of your project or the end of your working time, is it best to go ahead and finish the row if you can? Um, okay, so, so if you're working on a project and you have to stop mid-row, is that the question? Mid-row? Correct. You can stop anywhere. Like you don't have to, um, I would want to stop at the end of the row just because psychologically I feel like I finished that row so I can move, you know, I can go do something else. But um, you can stop anywhere you want to stop. Um, you want to leave your, kind of leave your hook in it so you don't, because if somebody catches this yarn and pulls it, like if it gets caught on somebody's shoe and they pull it, it'll all unravel. So you do want to, I recommend keeping your hook in it and maybe securing it like that. Um, if you stop mid row, you just wanna make sure you know where you are in that row. If you're just working like this, where you're just working single crochet all the way across, that's very easy, but some patterns will be more difficult and you might be you know, doing a more difficult pattern. You just wanna make sure you know where you are in that pattern, so. But you can stop mid row if you want. You can do anything you want. What do you think, Claire? I guess I like to finish the row and then I don't know I feel like that I'm not left in the middle of it and then like you said um just pull up I pull up a big loop of yarn so that if it does get tugged there's less chance of the stitch totally falling out yeah um if you're working on a shawl though and there's like 300 stitches in a row and you've ordered Chinese food and the delivery of the is there, you're not gonna, you're not gonna finish the row, you're gonna get, get your food, right? Well, yes, in that See? case. In that case, yeah, there's always a, there's always a situation, isn't there? <laughs> there is. All right, we've got about 10 minutes left in class. So we should probably oh, well, go over fast. this pattern. Okay, let me first, I'm going to, I'll sh show you how to end your work. So I finished my, I, for whatever reason, I just needed to make this little piece and I'm done. So I'm going to just cut my yarn and then you pull this straight up until it comes through. And now that's secure and it's not going to come undone. And then you're gonna take a large eye blunt needle. It's just um, has a large enough eye for yarn and it's not sharp. We're going to put that on our needle and crochet stitches are very thick and they're three dimensional. So I like to try to just go kind of under and kind of in the middle of my stitches. Um, so I'm just kind of going under, kind of through the post. And you wanna double check this side to make sure that you're not showing your needle and then pull it through. Um, it's better to go over about two inches. So let me see if I can get this. So I'm gonna pick this strand of yarn, go under that. I'm gonna go under that one. And then under, I'm just hiding it. Nothing too elaborate or fancy. And now I'm gonna go back the other way. So I'm going to go down, down the next one. And I'm gonna do it wrong to show you like why you need to be careful. Okay, so I'm gonna weave my needle through like I did before. Okay, now I'm gonna check the other side, but you can see my needle on the other side. Is it showing up right here? 
Um, if I pull my needle through, I'm gonna pull yarn through and you're gonna see strands of yarn. So you don't want that. So I'm gonna pull it back out. And I'm just gonna make sure, I'm gonna kind of go back through the same tunnel that I came across on because it's such a small piece, but usually I'd rather go um, down to the next row. So I've, I've taken my needle all the way through. You can't see my needle. You can't see my needle on this side. And you just pull it through, kind of massage it out a bit and then cut it flush. You don't want to tie any knots. People tie knots and then the knots come untied and your work will unravel. I've had to repair stuff for so many people that's happened to, it's very sad. Um, and then you would just weave this other tail in the exact same way and then snip it off flush with your fabric and there are your ends woven in, okay? And then I'll cover that kind of fast because we do want to get to the pattern. Okay, and here's my pattern. So this is the pattern we're reviewing today. Um, it is a free pattern from Lion Brand. You can always download it. Um, if you put this number in, or um, if you search crochet level one wrist warmers and reprint it if you need to. So this is having us um, use uh, Lion Brand um, Heartland yarn. Uh, the original one was done in Yellowstone, but of course, whatever one you like best. Uh, this one is using an I-9. So it's a little bit smaller than the J that it's calling for, but um, sometimes we want our fabric to be more dense, especially for gloves to keep our hands warm. And then a large eye blunt needle for weaving in the ends. So that's all we need. So we're gonna chain 21. So we know how to chain. If you notice though, it's not telling us to tie a slip knot, right? It assumes you know that you need to tie a slip knot. So you're gonna make a slip knot and then you're gonna chain 21. So row one, you're gonna single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So just like I showed you, you skip the first one, um, second chain from the hook and in each chain across. Chain one and then turn. And usually it does say chain one and then turn, but you can turn first if you want. You're gonna single crochet in each stitch across. So we're gonna just single crochet in each stitch we're gonna repeat row two until the piece measures about six and a half inches from the beginning. Um, fasten off the way I showed you, cut your yarn and pull it through that loop. And then for finishing, we're gonna fold the wrister in half, um, fold the wrister in half, bringing the first row to meet the last row. Sew the edges together for one inch, leave a one and a half inch opening for your thumb, and then sew the remainder of the edge together and weave in your ends. So this is a very, very simple pattern. You know how to make the chain. You know how to work into your chain. You know how to do single crochet. And we know how to work single crochets into other single crochets. That's all you need for this. And I'm gonna show you now how to, weave, how to sew your project together to finish it. So after you've, you're done crocheting, this is what you're gonna have. You're just having a rectangle. Now, what I like to do is I like, I don't like to follow the rules. And so when I made it, I made a much bigger one. And all I did was I chained 31 instead of 21. And then I made this one that's much longer and it covers part of my wrist. So you can make a longer one or you can make one exactly like the pattern. You can do whatever you want. Um, when you do fasten off though, I want you to leave a long tail. So leave a tail that's about 15 or 20 inches and that'll be easier for you in the long run. So just pretend I'm using a different color yarn so you can see what I'm doing. You can show up a little better. But when I'm finished crocheting, if I leave a long tail like this, I can use my tail for seaming and that'll be one less end to weave in. So it'll save you a little extra work. So when you fasten off, leave a long tail for seaming. All you're gonna do is fold it in half. 
Um, you can look at it, maybe one side looks a little better. So pick which side you want for the outside and then put right sides together. So this is my, I want this on the outside. So I'm gonna do it like that. And then all I'm gonna do for sewing is I'm just gonna find the corner. So I want a nice flush corner. And then I'm going to use these stitches as my guide. So I'm gonna just go under. Um, if I were still crocheting, that's where I would go to crochet. So I'm going to use those for sewing. So I'm gonna go under there and on this side. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go under the next stitch. And this is gonna help make all of my stitches um, spaced out the same and going the same depth. And that will help my stitches look neater. So you don't have to have anxiety about sewing if you don't know how to sew. And you'll be using the same color yarn that you made your glove with. So even if your stitches aren't great, they're not gonna show up. So it, you don't have to worry about it. Okay. So I've started it. I'm gonna leave a space for my thumb. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm just going to just sew on one side to carry my working yarn down. Cause I don't wanna cut it and weave in more ends cause that's not fun. So let's call that an inch and a half. And then I'm gonna to continue to work both sides, just going back and forth until you get to the end. You do kind of wanna monitor the end as you're going because it's stretchy fabric and you might end up stretching it. So it's like that. Um, and that's not gonna make anyone's day better. So you just kind of want to make sure as you're sewing it, it's such a small piece, you just kind of double check and make sure that corner is still lining up. And then you'll just finish it up and then weave in your ends. Okay, I know we covered a lot today. Are there any questions that I can quickly go over? Right at five, any, anything you're stuck on or? something that didn't show up well. I'll go ahead and put the handout in the chat here in case anyone needs that again, uh, both the PDF and the link. And then a reminder that we did record this class and it'll be posted in about 24 hours on the Michael's YouTube channel. So you can go back and rewind and pause and rewind as many times as you need to. Yeah. And also, if you do run into questions as you're practicing, you can contact me on Instagram. And my Instagram name is Mr. Woolly Bear, M-I-S-T-E-R, Woolly Bear. Maybe Claire will put that in the chat. Or if you find me on Facebook, it's just my name spelled out and my picture's there. So you'll see it. You'll recognize it. Send me a direct message if you have any questions, and I'll be glad to follow up and help you um, in any way I can. Sometimes I, maybe I'll direct you to a YouTube video that shows it in a different way, or sometimes I can answer questions pretty quick. So that's when the questions will come. When you start practicing, you'll, you'll realize maybe there are questions. So don't hesitate to ask questions. Let me know. Anything else, Claire? Let me scroll back here. Um... Oh, someone wanted to, to try on that short mitt so we could see it on your hand. Oh, it's very short to me. It I, is, yes. They're more like, I, um, I don't know, channeling Madonna from the 80s. <laughs> I, guess. I would almost use it as a, remember Whisper Stormers from the 70s? Anyone that old, remember the 70s? Oh, yeah. I do. Now you're ready to go play tennis. Yeah, that's why I made mine longer. And when I made the hand really long, so it covers my fingers and then you can fold this down. So a friend of mine, her name's Madeline. I don't know her last name. She was one of our customers at Studio Claire. She made gloves like this. She called them turtleneck gloves. So you can extend it to cover your hand for a cold day, but if you want to, you can fold it back and then that way you're, you don't have your hand covered. So and it's the same thing. You just make it long enough and it's the thumb placement and there you go. All right, anything else? And how many stitches did you skip for the thumb? 
How many what? How many stitches did you skip when you were sewing up the side to make the thumb hole? Make the thumb. You don't want to go by how many stitches it is because everybody's stitches might be a little different. So what you do want to go, I when I sewed these up, I just laid my hand down and put um, a stitch marker to mark my thumb. That's how I did it because my thumb might be different than your thumb. But if you follow the directions, it's instructing you to leave um, leave next one and a half inch open for the thumb. So they're leaving a one and a half inch space. Now for me, that might be 10 stitches. For you, that might be 12. Somebody else, it might be eight. So you, you, know, you don't wanna go by the number of stitches, go by the measurement. Or lay your thumb, lay your hand down and measure how big your thumb is. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. And we are a little bit over here, but hopefully we see all of you next week for Crochet 102. Practice, practice, practice in the week between. That is really what is going to get everything stuck in your head so you can do yep. it almost without thinking. Yeah, the more you practice, the easier it will become, I promise. So, All right. Have a great day. Thanks for coming to class.